You are what you need. Whether you have discovered that or not, and you might not have yet. You might think that someone else is what you need or something else is what you need. And on relative levels, you know, that's true. I'm not going to talk about that. You know, we obviously need to eat and have shelter and, you know, be comfortable and have connection and belonging and all those good things. Creative aspirations, visions, you know, life. On the relative plane, it's infinite. When I say you are what you need, that if you're looking for peace, if you're looking for true peace and wellness in yourself, I don't mean free of physical challenges, because we most of us have them one way or another. But what I mean just really the ability to be here and appreciate life, even in the smallest thing. In the moments of life when you're not in the way of aliveness. The zone, we, you've heard people say, they're in the zone. <laughs> I don't know if they're still using that word. It's not a state you can hold on to or make happen. It's, it's a description of when you, your relative self, are, is not in the way of here. It's also known as realized or enlightened. It's, those words aren't useful anymore, I don't think. They're too encumbered with too much baggage from thousands of years of misunderstanding. <laughs> but actually the truth is within you. It's in every atom of every molecule, of every cell of your nervous system. It is the essence of all matter and all being in all directions, infinitely. Ask within yourself for what you need and want, whatever it is, even if it's a ball of cherries. Honor your needs, honor your desires. Be kind to the frail, suffering human that you are. It took me a long time to be gentle with myself. And I'm still learning that every day. My joke was kind of honest, actually, was I used to make type A look catatonic. And that was going to send me into an early grave. And it was, actually. That's the, that's the truth. But somehow or other, I was saved. <laughs> I hate to say that, sounds very religious. Um, but I was. Just like you are being guided back to your true nature, we all are. And the more we fight it, the more we suffer. That's why when you're here for those two hours, your job is to turn towards 
what you normally unconsciously resist or push away or try to fix or try to understand or to try to enlighten, God forbid. <laughs> That's not your job. You can't enlighten yourself. You can't heal yourself. If you have that belief, that's the same as saying, well, I'm going to go out and make sure the sun's shining today, okay? I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> that's how crazy that thought is. Because it's our nature to be free. It's our nature to be in harmony with ourselves in harmony with each other, in harmony with the planet and the animals. People who haven't lost that are still living in harmony with each other and themselves and the earth, and they live in, and they live sustainably. There's cultures, there are primitive cultures still existing today. And when I've met them, I know they're awake. I feel it. And they know I am. They don't call it that. They say, oh, you have power. <laughs> That's what they said. And it was beautiful. And we all have that. We all have the life force that has been enculturated out of consciousness. So it isn't about being a good little follower that's going to free you. It's about following the truth that is showing itself right now to you. Believe it or not, in the guise of suffering. That's why the Buddha made the first noble truth, life is suffering. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> That sounds really negative. <laughs> I remember when I told my mom, she goes, that's so negative. <laughs> I thought, you don't get it. You don't get it, mom. You're not getting it. <laughs> or when I told her some famous line of a Zen master, life is one continuous mistake. And if it wasn't that way, how would you find your way? She goes, that's so negative. <laughs> she had a very positive attitude, which was wonderful, actually, honestly even when she was dying, friends would come and see her. They'd say, hey, Barb, how are you? She goes, I think I'm on the mend. <laughs> when she was dying, she said that. I'm not kidding. It's amazing. And I've told some of you, have heard some of me tell you that when I was by her bedside and I was wailing, She was comforting me with her hand like this. She was making nice on me. <laughs> Sometimes you have to make nice on yourself. And in those moments when I'm releasing deep grief or whatever it is, instinctively I do this. I go, oh, it's my mom. She's comforting me. Be your best mom and comfort yourself. That's actually going to help you heal and it'll actually help your spirit come into the foreground. One of my most important friends, beloved friends, over 50 years, he's 96 now, Brother David Steindl Rast said to me when I was 20, when he first met me, when we first met each other, when I was a monk, Buddhist monk, and we began, we had a connection then and continued for 50 years. I'm almost 70 now. He said to me, of course I didn't understand him <laughs> then, but he said the purpose of spirituality is to become fully human. And that's what we need. We need our humanity. 
And when you regain your humanity, and that's what I'm teaching her, is how to love yourself, how to take care of yourself so that your spirit will be radiating through every cell in your body. Your true heart will be here, and you will be realized, and you will be free. But you will just be the human that you are, the, the simple, ordinary, imperfect, struggling human that you are. And at the same time, you'll be free. You'll be at peace. That's the real path. That's the true path. That's the honest path. That's the path with integrity. That's the path that's not bullshitting you into stealing your money and turning you into a follower. That path is the path of you. That's why I said, you are what you need. So come home. Come home. You've been gone too long. And you know those moments when you are, because you feel a relief of being. And when you come into a field like this that could bring you back home or can resonate that truth of your nature, we call it in the Buddhist tradition, transmission of the Dharma. That's the true teaching, but the true teachers who don't identify as teachers will tell you that when there's no one taking themselves to be a teacher and no one taking themselves to be a student, then teaching is happening. Another way to say that is when your nose is clean, you can smell the flower. <laughs> I love that. So just do the best you can here. Just know that I love you unconditionally. Yeah, I can't help it. I'm, uh, it's just my nature. And uh, my mom once said to me, you're just a big love, honey. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes, as my dear friend said, you're a fire-breathing dragon. <laughs> Sometimes I do get intense in my work. But, you know, we all need a little help. Sometimes we need a little kick in the pants. Right? I do. A loving kick in the pants.